Energy is the mainspring of modern life. Without energy, we couldn't produce our food, manufacture objects, communicate, work or get around. The war in Ukraine is a painful reminder of the price of our energy dependence. For a long time, our prosperity has relied on cheap, imported energy, the non-renewable fossil energies that caused global heating. To avoid an ecological catastrophe, Europe has set itself the goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. The clock is ticking. Our continent must radically change the way it produces and consumes energy. But how to drive this energy transition in such troubled times? In 2020, post-lockdown carbon dioxide emissions in Europe dropped by only 7%. 7% is the reduction in emissions that we must make each year to reach the objective set by the Paris Climate Agreement, not to increase global heating by more than 2 degrees by 2030. Will we get there in time? We're off the coast of Athens, Greece. This ship comes from Nigeria to deliver liquefied natural gas, enough to cover the country's consumption for two weeks. Other tankers arrive throughout the year, hailing from Qatar, Algeria, and increasingly often, the USA. But until now, most Greek gas came from Russia. Control, Akui. Akui, the control. Elenchos prosdesis pliou. This is the High Security Gas Inventory Control Center for Greece. All European countries have at least one center of this type. They are key to guaranteeing that markets throughout the continent are supplied. I saw that today the flows from CD Rockastro are, are zero. Yes. Why are we not importing gas from Bulgaria? Uh, the station is closed uh, due to maintenance that we do on the, on the Bulgarian system. So now we have uh, three entry points, uh, operational three out of four. Exactly. Are the tanks quite full? Yes, yes. Okay. So we can cover tot the total demand uh, exactly. even uh, during the yes, interruption. Yes. Europe has always had a sort of weakness, if we want to say so, that is, there has been a, always a, a large importer of energy. It is clear that there is a strong willingness and a strong decision taken by the European Union and by European countries to reduce significantly the dependency from uh, uh, Russian gas. Until the war in Ukraine, 40% of European gas and 30% of European oil came from Russia. In total, our continent covers 60% of its energy needs through imports, and the trend isn't relenting. Here are all the oil and gas tankers sailing off Europe for over a week. Many come from Middle Eastern countries and take the Suez Canal. And here are all the pipelines that bring in the gas from Siberia, North Africa, and the North Sea. These supply networks reveal the extent of our energy dependence which goes well beyond our continent's borders. Europe is paying a heavy political price to quench its thirst for gas and oil. How many wars have been waged to guarantee our supplies of fossil fuels in the Middle East, in the Caucasus, in Africa and in Iraq? How many contracts were signed to build these pipelines with kings, dictators, and Soviet bureaucrats when the USSR started selling its gas to Western Europe. Will the war in Ukraine alter the course of history? As a consequence of this war, the controversial Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline, intended to allow Germany to import more gas and hence use less coal, will never be opened. Its commissioning would only increase Germany's dependence on Russian gas. For Maria Galli, there are alternatives to Russian gas as long as European countries coordinate their efforts. 
This means, first of all, uh, increasing as much as possible uh, the offtake from existing other pipelines and other producing countries which are connected through pipelines. And here we talk about Norway fundamentally plus North Africa. Europe has invested a lot in a well interconnected gas grid. Consider Austria, for instance, has always been a transit country for Russian gas into Italy. Since investment have been made in the past to operate the pipe in both flows direction, now Austria can receive gas coming from Italy, potentially gas coming from North Africa. So having a well-developed infrastructure helped to manage this complex situation. Despite its sophisticated infrastructures, Europe cannot reduce its dependency on gas in the short term. To replace Russian gas, it would need to increase imports from the USA and Qatar. Our need for gas and oil is not decreasing. To supply our cars with gasoline, asphalt the roads they drive on, make their tires, as well as produce plastic, cosmetics, fertilizer and even medication. Gas, too, is used in many industrial processes, but also for our heating and cooking. It has become crucial to electricity production, especially in countries like Germany and Italy, which have halted their nuclear power plants and want to close their coal-fired plants. That's why the price of electricity is linked to that of gas. In fact, a gas-fired power plant emits on average half the CO2 of a coal-fired plant. That's why Maria Rita Galli firmly believes that gas can fight climate change. But is this really a necessary step in the upcoming energy transition? It's a bit of a cross point uh, uh, today because, of course, uh, there is a huge discussion about uh, uh, the future of uh, the decarbonized energy system. Wind and solar will grow and will grow more and more, but you cannot uh, store electricity for more than one day. So you need a form of energy that can be stored. And today, if you want to decarbonize East and Southeast Europe, you need gas. Many in Germany don't see it that way, especially among the young. Konzerne und Regierungen ähm, verkaufen uns dieses Gas als eine angeblich grüne Alternative und wir müssen uns dagegen stellen. Denn wir haben gesehen, dass Regierungen auf der ganzen Welt, Regierungen in Europa, es seit Jahrzehnten nicht schaffen, auf die Klimakatastrophe zu reagieren. Und diese Tatsache zeigt uns, dass wir keine andere Möglichkeit haben, als das selbst in die Hand zu nehmen. Hier in Brunsbüttel, near Hamburg, during the summer of 2021, many environmental movements such as Fridays for Future and Ender Gelände mobilized to oppose the construction of a new liquefied natural gas terminal. This port area is already home to many industries related to gas processing, a refinery, a fertilizer manufacturer and automotive subcontractors. These installations illustrate several decades of energy policies. As long as gas was cheap, industries were in no rush to switch to renewables, especially since to maintain low-cost energy for certain industrial sectors, Europe and the European countries have largely subsidized the production and consumption of hydrocarbons. Es ist so, dass die Wirtschaft in Deutschland generell von Gas abhängig ist. Das ist ein großes Problem, dem wir nur entgegentreten können, wenn wir erneuerbare Energien ausbauen. Es ist so, dass erneuerbare Energien auch heute schon billiger sind als die fossile Energie, die jedoch weiterhin subventioniert wird. Und wir können keine Kompromisse machen, denn wir haben nur noch wenig Zeit, um die Klimakatastrophe aufzuhalten. Genau dafür werden wir kämpfen, bis es soweit ist. Und ich bin optimistisch, dass wir das schaffen.
The war in Ukraine has pushed the climate emergency into the background, but global heating has not stopped. Here in red are the Dirty 30, the 30 most polluting coal-fired plants in Europe. All the experts agree they must be switched off as soon as possible if we want to contain the temperature increase to less than two degrees. And this is Belchatov, Poland, nicknamed Climate Killer. This is the world's largest lignite thermal power plant, the worst source of CO2 emissions in Europe, as well as air and water polluter. Unplugging Belchatov won't be easy. For a long time, these open cast mines have made Poland self-sufficient in energy. Today, 80% of its electricity is produced with coal, and 80,000 miners still live off it. Moim jednym z zainteresowań jest właśnie bieganie. Tu w regionie naszym, tuż za kopalnią, gdzie kiedyś odpady były wywożone, tam są różnego rodzaju kolejny, ale świetnie nadaje się do biegania. Normalnie, super. For 30 years, Jerzy Hubke was proud to be a miner, just like his father before him. Since he retired, his son Rafael has taken over. Powiedz mi tak, tu jest Makoszowy. Tak. Makoszowy jest zlikwidowane. Jeszcze pracuje. Potem dalej Bielszowice też pracują. Ruda, ruda jest przewidziana dopiero na 2029-34. Ja pracuję na kopalni Knuru w Szczygłowice. Widać ją tam w oddali. Jest fajnie. Lubię tą pracę, podoba mi się ona. Fajne miejsce, fajni ludzie. Nic, tylko pracować. Szczęśliwie do emerytury. Ten węgiel jest, my musimy starać się, aby go wydoba, wydobywać z ziemi i, i żebyśmy mogli po prostu dobrze, godnie żyć, to musimy ten węgiel wydobywać. Tak jest na Śląsku i póki te zasoby są, tak będzie. Miejmy nadzieję. When mines close, miners lose not only a well-paid job, but also often their identity. Taki właśnie można powiedzieć, że zostaliśmy jakby poświęceni na ołtarzu e, tych przeobrażeń, że skoro Śląsk jako ten region wspomagał kraj przez tyle lat. No proszę zauważyć, że po II wojnie światowej to Śląsk i górnictwo zaczęło odbudowywać Warszawę. Tam wytwarzano materiały budowlane i za pieniądze sprzedane z węgla odbudowywano Warszawę. Utrzymywał tą polską gospodarkę. I to do późnych lat 80., nawet do początku lat 90. Europe has grown rich from coal. It drove its industrial revolution. That era is at an end, and many mines elsewhere in Europe have been converted into leisure parks and museums. But in Poland, in Germany, in Romania, coal mining is still not ancient history. We are still destroying villages, forests and fields for coal. For the climate, it is urgent that these mines be closed. But for the miners, it is all happening too quickly. Tych kopalń zamknięto bardzo dużo. Były osoby, które popełniły samobójstwo. Były osoby, które się rozpiły, popadły w alkoholizm. Taki żal, żal i nawet rodzaj gniewu. A inaczej, jeżeli mówimy o sprawiedliwej transformacji, to nie do końca się zgodzę, że do tej pory ta sprawiedliwa transformacja była. Wręcz przeciwnie. Jerzy gradually became aware of the dilemma in which his entire region was living. He did not hesitate to look for answers outside the box. Tu w tym pomieszczeniu się spotkaliśmy. Greta siedziała tutaj na tym krześle. Odczułem nawet, że, że wyraziła troskę. In 2020, Jerzy met activist Greta Thunberg. His colleagues didn't all appreciate that, far from it. 
Some saw their meeting as an act of treachery. Porozmawiamy z ekologami, bo się spotkaliśmy z Gretą, to jesteśmy dlatego źli. Jak było? Przede wszystkim z górnikami się nie rozmawia o ekologii. I to na Śląsku to tak jest. Ktoś, to tam ekologia, to jest wróg górnika. Bo się z nimi nie rozmawia i każdy sobie myśli, no jak oni chcą coś ekologicznie, to znaczy trzeba zamykać, trzeba odbiegać. Proste, nie? Co chciała Greta wiedzieć? Greta chciała wiedzieć, co z tradycjami, to o czym, Darek, byłeś, rozmawialiśmy, tak? E, co z regionem, co z ludźmi. Górnik, albo inaczej, część górników jakby nie jest przygotowana na zmiany. A z drugiej strony, jeżeli mają być te zmiany, to te zmiany muszą być z poszanowaniem pracy górniczej. Górnika. Jestem zaniepokojony tym, co się dzieje, jeżeli chodzi o klimat na naszym świecie. Gdzie u nas na przykład była normalnie zima, a teraz ta zima się przesuwa albo jej nie ma wcale. Kiedy latem są jakieś wyładowania atmosferyczne, burze, nie wiadomo skąd, kiedyś czegoś takiego nie było. To jednocześnie zdaję sobie sprawę z tego, że też mogę szkodzić. Szkodzić środowisku, a tak nie chciałbym. Kwestia jeszcze raz powtórzę kiedy będziemy uczciwie podchodzić do tych przemian. The crisis caused in 2022 by Russia's invasion of Ukraine risks delaying the end of coal in Europe probably until 2030. This upheaval forces us to reconsider not just the way we produce and distribute energy, but also the way we use it. In Europe today, the richest 10% emits six times as much carbon dioxide as the poorest 50%. How can this glaring inequality be reduced, especially if we take into account those for whom energy is a luxury, and they are many? This is where Bolmenka and Boyko Ivanov live, a poorly insulated apartment in the east of Bulgaria. Both are workers. During the pandemic and the successive lockdowns in the country, they had to homeschool. като пирални, съдомиални, въобще такива големи уреди, които харчат тук. Не, от. А пак плащаш много. А пак плащаш. Тука? Я виж? Още когато дойде сметката за вода, не за тока. Айде. Първата работа се чешеш за главата и се чудиш от къде идват тези сметки. Energy poverty affects 55 million Europeans, 10% of the continent's population, and this proportion increases with each spike in energy prices. The way our energy is produced is a reflection of our lifestyles. In this sense, the speed of the energy transition will depend on our individual and collective political choices.